Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, I'm back with another video and as you can see, not a whole lot has changed. I've been busy with school and such, but I have been asked to elaborate on my mental system. So of course, I made that system. Uh, but I did, I did show some of it, uh, but it didn't really go into detail in the blueprints. So, what I've done is I basically still have the same old jump from uh, the starter content. Nothing wrong with the jump. Also easily changeable. A little cough there. <laughs> but also easily adjustable uh, in the character movement. The only thing I've done is basically I've added a collapsed graph of mental. So when we double click here, what we're gonna get is basically get the world location of our character or of our camera. So that's this one. But to the Z uh, axis we add 16. Uh, I've found it more aligned uh, to where you want to go in that way because we are using a box trace so let's see I had a thing for this yeah D set mental visibility so that's for the debug uh, so basically this box, box trace that I'm doing is set this for a four to four duration the box trace is that the first trace that it does so that's this one uh actors to ignore i've just done self but it's an array so i had to make an array of it and i also get a control rotation so that's basically the way your character is looking uh the controller is basically your camera and I get that X factor. Uh, so the control rotation is the orientation. And from the X factor, which we multiply, so we basically get a, uh, a forward factor. And we add these two together. So that's the end size. With a box size of 32. So then with this 16, basically makes it more aligned. All right, then we hit a branch from our return value. So basically, has it hit anything? Um, does it, is it a valid object? If not, break. And break is basically just, uh, yeah, break is just the output. Uh, I set this to a custom event, so basically to avoid more of the uh, spaghetti of the, um, of lines going everywhere uh, it just just break like a basic JavaScript function or C sharp function or basically any function in any language now we check if it's valid if it is not valid we go to the capsule trace uh, if it is valid or this is the climbable uh, yeah if it is valid if it's not if it isn't valid we go to the capsule trace if it isn't valid uh wait sorry let's let's back up a little bit so we check if it's valid if it is valid we'll check if it's maybe unclimbable if that's the case then we'll break but if it is valid and it's climbable we'll do the or it doesn't have any tag We'll go for capsule trace by channel. And same with if it isn't valid, we'll just do the capsule trace. Uh, so here we break a factor, which is the hit location. And the hit location uh, we set as the starting point with, so this is a capsule trace. Uh, the 
unique location will set as a starting point uh, plus 160 so that's basically the max height you can go up from that point uh, this is to check if it might be possible uh, or if there's actually a ledge so we get the active forward factor times 300 and we add these to the end location and again we make an array with prototype as well the prototype so I can easily change it here or with the console command but I don't know how that works anymore it's been a while so that factor is also used to break again at 64 uh, for the other capsule trays and this is basically to make sure the way is clear so if the if uh, there's a return volume it'll or if there isn't a return value it'll go on to the capsule trace if there is it'll just break so i've added a knot here just to keep this line nice and straight right we add 64 we make a factor of it that's the start location we add to that factor the act uh, the actor forward factor and from that we make an array and our prototype again so these are basically all the traces and with this information we can actually boost our character up so a lot of games use some kind of animation and most of the time it works better but i've i've found that this works better as a sort of free form uh, type of mantle so this is the way i choose to do it if you have a more realistic game i certainly uh, try and get an animation because well honestly it looks better and with root motion you'll have better positioning uh, because this basically just boosts your character up and if you hold uh, forward so if you hold W uh, you'll, you, you'll be able to get up uh, as you can see we just launched the character so we get the hit location we have our mesh and we get a world location of that and then just subtract the hit location from our world location get the gravity skill so this is important because at different gravities uh, your character launch if you have a low gravity scene for example I have uh, mercury if you have a low gravity scene uh, it'll be hard to adjust it accordingly with this it just takes it in co into consideration and uh, we've multiplied by three I, I found three to be the best uh, to be best but if you want a little bit less a little bit more you can choose whatever you want and on x or y i've chosen not to launch them uh, mainly because if you start launching them at the same time you launch them on the a x axis uh, it doesn't really do that much because it just basically bumps you into the wall I play my sound I check if the weapon ref so that's basically the reference of my weapon is valid and I play a little montage of the race I'm in from the weapon so that's the same uh, animation I use uh, it's the same one as when I switch and this one is still <laughs> still in development yeah but if I switch my weapon, it'll just use that animation, so it'll look uh, right with any uh, any weapon. So that's basically how I've done it. And as you can see, you have the first try, then you have the second try, and then you have uh, basically a space check if you can actually run on it. And well, it basically works on anything. So this is a, this is a pretty simple scene uh, made for actually testing. But if I go to a more, well, I found scene. So this is a scene I've been working on for quite some time now. It's nowhere near finished though. Uh, so it, it's under construction. Everything you're gonna see here, it's work in progress. So let's just turn that off. Whoa. This doesn't really seem to work that great anymore. Now I'll have to look into that. 
Anyway, if we have a scene like this, I will just play from here. And we wanted to go up here, for example. It still works pretty, pretty well. Also a movable object, so, well, these are too light, but I mean, you get my point. You can fold onto them. Uh, it doesn't have to be completely straight if you want to go somewhere. It's basically always possible. Same with this. Uh, I wanted to restrict the player the least I could in their movement. So if you wanted to come up here and fire from a different angle, not intended, uh, they could. Because it will be an um, arena type uh, type thing. So there we go again. We can just get up there. So yeah, <laughs> it's a lot of work creating arenas uh, in this fashion. But I think the mental system really helps um, to make it, well, film uh, more natural. And that's why I've chosen to use such a quick animation and just, just a boost. I've also been working with blending meshes and terrain. I think it looks alright, but definitely needs some work. You can still just kind of see the see the scene. But anyway, uh, this is what I wanted to show real quick. Uh, so as I said, this is a work progress scene, uh, and I'll talk to y'all later. Goodbye.